Welcome to the Lippus Report. Hi everyone, I'm Nick Lippis uh, here at the Ixia Isom City uh, Lab and uh, today we're testing the Arista um, 7504 product and with me is Sean uh, Fees, right? Yes. And uh, so Sean, what's your title over at Arista? And I'm a consulting system engineer. I've been with Arista for about three years. Excellent. Great. So uh, we're going to have lots of numbers on the 7504, but like what I want to talk about right now is actually how customers are using the 7504, which is a very dense, you know, very high performance, 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, switch, both in um, both the financial services industry sector, as well as cloud uh, infrastructure, as well as in large in enterprises. So, Sean, what are you seeing in the market? Um, sure. So the the 7504 is the smaller brother to our 7508, which is a 384 port 10 gig. The 7504 is a 192 port 10 gig. Uh, wire speed L2, L3, yeah. deep buffers. And what we found is, is that the market has changed as far as density goes and requirements in the data center. Um, it used to be that in most applications, traffic in the data center was north-south. Yeah. I mean, somebody made a query and the server responded. But if you take a look at the Facebooks, the Mixies, the Zingas of the world, the Ebays of the world, um, they respond with the web page, but they have to build all that data, who your friends are, what your updates are ahead of time. And the traffic pattern has changed. It's going from, from not from north-south, uh, from east-west. So that web page response is a very small portion of the data. Yeah. Um, Can I interject something sure. in there? I think it's, it's a really important point, too, because for those who, who don't deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis is that you may also look at like our you know, new tablet designs or iPhones or iPads, and you send kind of queries into Facebook or in other kinds of data centers, <laughs> And there isn't that much bandwidth going back and forth, so you may have the uh, idea that, okay, well, there isn't, it isn't a big demand for bandwidth in the data centers. And you'd be really wrong, because these cores that go in actually set off a huge tsunami of Brownian motion of lots of east to west and even north to south kind of traffic flows within data centers. And that's the, I think, what captures the dynamic that's happening in the data centers right now that is really driving latency really low to levels that we've never had to achieve before in the industry and also bandwidth really high as well. Right? Yeah, exactly. The, the old traditional model, you had uh, 200 to 1 over subscription. And from one rack to talk to the other rack, you had 150 nanoseconds of latency. Mm. Uh, Using the Arista products, you can do the exact same thing for the exact same amount of money with um, no oversubscription at all, and the interact latency down to ten microseconds. Yeah, that's huge. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and when when the customer is waiting for the Facebook page to be built, or Facebook who has the ads on the page, the response, you know, studies have shown that customers don't wait. So so this ability to generate that page quickly and to send that out is really really important. Okay. Okay, excellent. So I think we have kind of the dynamic you now. So then in terms of like structure, you know, we've been hearing a lot in the industry, we, we're kind of moving from three tiers to two tiers because of the oversubscription, kind of take the oversubscription over out so you eliminate a tier, which is mm -hmm. great because it's it's a simpler, easier kind of architecture now to build to. Mm -hmm. So is that also what you're saying in building to? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, the, the traditional data center would scale to maybe uh, 20 or 30 racks. Um, with the 7508 product, the 7504 product, and the Arista 7100 series, um, believe it or not, you can actually scale uh, 10 gig with our MLAG, uh, multi-chassis lag functionality, to, to, to over 700 ports of 10 gig mm -hmm. at layer two, which is fantastic for these clusters that build this data. Um, if you go down to one gig with our 7500 and our 7048T one gig product, yeah. you can actually get to 9K servers, all in the same L L2 domain. If you add L3 into it, you can get to 18K. Yeah. And if you go to wow. a 2 to 1 over subscription, you get to 36,000 servers. Yeah. And uh, these are, those are cloud spec kind yeah. of data centers. This is so cloud spec kind of data yeah. centers. This is, this is Microsoft Azure. This is EC3. Yeah. This is, this is uh, Korean Telecom's uh, latest cloud project. This is, this is where things are going. Yeah. All the web pages are generated from this interaction of this east west traffic. Yeah. Yeah, very good, excellent. Okay, great, so I think we got a good idea for scale. Um, now also, uh, a couple of other things are happening in the industry too, clearly, you know, virtualization is one of them, you know, to, to use an often over-quoted term, a mega trend, you know, in mm -hmm. our industry. So, um, so, and the clear key thing there is the difficulty in moving VMs from one machine to another machine and all the reconfiguration that has to take place. So there's been a couple of different approaches to that. One has been uh, you create a very large flat layer two network, so it doesn't matter. You know, you're not, you're not creating VLANs, you know, in 
um, and layer three uh, boundaries, so you can move things around. Um, and uh, and the other dimension is around visibility, you know, into a kind of a virtualized versus non-virtualized infrastructure. So is there anything that, um, or I guess, how is uh, Arista approaching that problem as well? So allow companies sure. to scale. Um, sure. So so in the VM world, one of the important things is is that in traditional design, you have a separation between the servers and the network. When the switching for the local VMs comes back to the servers, you're removing some of that from the network side, and you have points of contention. Um, if a VM moves from one server to the other, uh, the server administrator can make that move, but then he has to open a ticket with the uh, network team to allow that VLAN or disallow that VLAN. Yeah. Uh, Arista is a VMware partner, and one of the things that we started to do is we have this product called VM Tracer. Mm. It's built into EOS, which is our operating system on every switch, and it integrates with vSphere. And it allows the network administrator to use the familiar CLI that they're used to, to actually see what servers are attached to what ports, mm -hmm. what VMs are running, what their quality of service policy is, what their ACLs are. And if the server administrator initiates a, a, a vMotion, a move from one to the other, um, we will automatically disallow the VLAN on the one that's being moved from and allow it on the one that is being allowed to. So you eliminate this ticket, you eliminate the possibility of this downtime, and you're providing a great deal of depth and insight to the network administrator, um, which has been taken away from them by the advent of uh, VMs. Excellent, so it gives the visibility. It gives the visibility. It's right. at least cross uh, administrative domains, so they exactly. can better manage it. Okay, great, actually I do have one more question, sure. and then I think we're gonna be out of time. Uh, EOS, you know, um, for some reason, we don't spend that much time talking about it in the industry, and I, I wanna give you guys credit you know, highly reliable modular architecture, and where I kind of view it is that it becomes a, um, a an operating system where you can actually start layering network services. And when I think of network services, I'm thinking like security services and load balancing services and WAN optimization services and so forth, like into the network itself. So, spend uh, spend a moment on EOS. Sure. Uh, one of the the differences that Arista took approach is we built this world class hardware, but the hardware doesn't make sense unless you have a world class operating system. And the old legacy approach is that you had this mon this uh, monolithic real time kernel that reacted and everything was in one space. And Arista said, you know, we're going to do this a little differently. So we use a Linux kernel. Uh, we provide full access to Linux to our customers, unlike uh, we don't lock them in into a wall garden. And then in this, in user land, we have this process called SysDB. It's a state database that keeps track of everything that's going on in the switch. Um, and every process on that switch, whether it's the ASIC driver, the spanning tree driver, the routing agent, or even we have a process called LED policy agent that turns the lights on and off. It's a separate process in a separate space. They subscribe to SysDB, and there's notification of changes. And what this allows for is the possibility for a process to be patched in real time on a switch, to be restarted on a switch, it allows for process separation. The crash in one process does not take down the switching packets. Mm -hmm. And the other side of this is that it allows for the customers to actually have access to the switch for the first time. We support the installation of Linux applications, web servers, Pixie booting, DHCP, and we'll also provide the customers API access to SysDB. So we don't know what they want to do with the switch. We're going to allow them to develop along the route that they did with having access to Linux on the servers and create really great, cool things. Yeah. Um, we don't try to dictate to them what they can do with their gear. OK, great. It's an it's a application development environment. It's a platform uh, exactly. for kind of network-based applications. OK, excellent. We're going to go and take a look at the 7504. It's in the lab, and it's being tested as we speak. Great. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Nick Lippis again, and I'm here with John Hafiz from uh, Arista Networks. Uh, we are standing right by the Arista 7504, brand new box. This goes into the core of the network, very high performance, 10 gigabit. Um, we'll talk about the number of ports, low speeds and speeds in a second. But in the industry, it's this scale of box now that's generating revenues anywhere between 20 to $40 million a quarter for some. Clearly, Cisco's numbers are a lot bigger. They're a different sector of the marketplace. But the bottom line is that these are now the hot boxes in the core of the network. So, Sean, tell us through the 7504. Sure. The 7504 is the, uh, the, the little brother of the 7508. It's a four slot chassis and seven rack units. There are 192 ports of line rate L2 and L3, 10 gigabit Ethernet with incredibly deep packet buffers. Um, we have four power supplies. Uh, every cable is on the front. Please notice this. The airflow is uh, front to rear. 
Uh, so it goes with the data center for hot, cold aisle design, um, and it's an SFP-based solution. There are two supervisors with, uh, with a display on status. This is customizable, as I said, EOS is customizable, so your company can put their own status and their own logos there. Um, and uh, the other thing that's really good about this box is that its power efficiency is the best in the business part of it. So, Sean, um, we were talking about EOS earlier. Where does EOS live in the 75 Sure. Sure. Uh, EOS uh, it resides on the uh, supervisor model. Um, it can be loaded by all the traditional methods. There's also a USB port to load on. And, and one thing that I want to point out that I think is really key in the industry is EOS is exactly the same image if you were on the 7504, the 7508, or our one our new products. It's the exact same piece of software, the same binary image. So for a company, they only have to qualify one release of software across the entire platform. Yeah, great, excellent, great. And also, all of these cables, normally these products wouldn't look like this. They would be mic wrap mounted, all the cables would be nicely manicured, uh, but we're testing this product, and that's why we have all these beautiful cables moving from the Arista product all the way up towards the Ixia uh, performance uh, gear. That concludes this edition of the Lippus Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. To get your free subscription to the Lippus Report newsletter, go to www.lippus.com.